This is Ryan Nidell, host of 15 Minutes to Freedom, your daily action guide to getting shit done. I appreciate the time you shared with me, whether it's today your first episode or throughout the entire journey that I've went on. Either way, if you gain value from my content, do me a favor and leave me a review wherever you're consuming this content at. The more reviews I get, the higher my ranking, the higher my ranking, the more people can hear the message. Today's episode is it's harder to stay than it is to go. So in today's episode, it's a pseudo listener requested episode in which I'm going to cover why in today's society, it's easier as a man to jump ship than it is to stay in a committed relationship. So if you've been a long time listener of the show, you know very transparently that I've had my ups and downs in relationships. Now, if I go way back when to when I first started in my first serious relationship, you know, what had happened was I was dating a girl and she ended up basically cheating on me in her own right. The first serious girlfriend I had, the first intimate relationship I had, and the level of cheating that she went down was not massive. It wasn't that big of a deal. But in the moment, as a senior in high school, I'd not yet kissed a girl before her. Like She was basically the first of everything. I was heartbroken. Like I was shattered. Like my entire belief system was like just tossed out the window. That coupled with massive insecurities that had built up inside of me over the course of a series of years, really the 17 years prior to that <laughs> particular environment, in particular meeting, particular relationship, had led me down this path of just not really valuing my female partner. Now, many of you listening right now might think that's a little bit of a cop-out. And I can agree with that in a certain standpoint. Like, here I am all throughout my 20s dating one really phenomenal woman after another. And I want to make sure that I always impress upon you that the women that I were, was dating were great people. Like, literally every one of them. I can't look back and say that any of them had bad qualities. They had things that didn't align with who I was or ultimately wanted to be. But what had happened is I was never sharing with them what I actually wanted and needed because I had a fear of failure and abandonment. So I would always just go down the path of finding somebody else, leaving that first girl on the side, thinking she was my primary girlfriend, and I would find somebody else to backfill that situation. So always hoping that if I just found another girl that one of them would stick the right way and I'd eventually have the testicular fortitude to get rid of the rest. Like, how crazy is that? If that was my life from really 20 slash 21, like I was in a committed relationship at 21, one and only girl, and as the ball bounces and things progress throughout my entire 20s, like, I don't know how many times that actually happened. Like, sure, there were times in my life where I was committed, one girlfriend, one girlfriend only, But the story that I've created, at least at this point, is that was more few and far between than the gold standard. So what had happened was, during that time period, I realized at some point, social media could be used as a pretty powerful tool. When I say pretty powerful tool, again, I'm 34 now and really have only been super active on social media in the past three and a half or four years. Doing that based off the fact that I couldn't be active on it in a transparent manner before because I knew then that the multiple women I was dating would end up catching me. It's literally like a complete dirtball. Like here I am. I shut down my Facebook account when I get done with college. Just shut it down because in my mind it's a college activity. It's nothing that the real world does. It's just something that college students do to stay in touch with one another, which is pretty wild because that's certainly not the way the actual world worked, but that was a story I told myself and also told those around me because it was the only way I could justify not having a social media account. But just on a side note right now, if your partner doesn't have a social media account, it's because they're hiding from something. They're hiding some nefarious activity. They're hiding something on the side. Like They're not proud of something. They're running from it, in my opinion, in today's society. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. Just coming from the life that I have lived, I know when I didn't have social media, there was a specific reason for it. And I told everybody anything from it was a college environment thing to I didn't need the distraction to I was too focused on work to that it was silly to all people did was hook up on it. Like Name a story and I had told one of my partners, one of my girlfriends during that time, that story. Guarantee it. Because of course they all had social media. 
and they were all taking pictures of us together. And there's always this internal panic where I wouldn't want to share. I wouldn't want to be in a picture. Like I also lived my entire twenties running from pictures saying like, I don't feel comfortable getting my photograph taken. I, I don't want my picture taken. I don't like the way that I look. Some of that is true. Like, I think we all have insecurities. I don't love the way I look all the time. Oh, well. The story I was telling everybody else at that point was I didn't like the way that I looked. Not because I actually didn't like the way that I looked, but because if they took a picture of me and shared it online, then eventually I might get caught. Which, of course, actually happened. That was one of the ways, one of the many ways that I got caught cheating. Different topic for a different podcast. This particular one is the fact of I had what I would call dummy social media accounts. Like I had these accounts that I had set up at different times in my life to basically be able to interact with other people. They were kept private. It was me, but you couldn't search it. Really like super dirtball stuff, like stuff I'm not proud of, but stuff that actually happened. And so here I am floating through my 20s. And I'm finding that on social media, if I, you know, ping somebody, direct message them, whatever the heck you want to call it, if I open up a conversation the right way, or I kind of see where people work out at or where they're going or what they're doing, it becomes very easy to open that door. The door of flirtation, the door of interaction, the door of leaving the opportunity open for a meetup. Now, this is all happening before the days of what Tinder and Bumble and all this other crazy stuff. Now, this is happening when it was just Instagram and Facebook. I was out of the dating world. Like, I've never had a Tinder account. I remember being with Lindsay and one of my good friends from college came in town, down from Cleveland. Him and I are going out to dinner together, and I see him messing around on his phone. And he just keeps swiping back and forth. I'm like, man, what are you doing right now? I saw him on this app. It's called Tinder. I'm like, man, explain to me Tinder. He goes, well, it's really like a, a law of averages thing where I'm from another town. If I come in here, I can set a, a proxy. So depending on how far away someone is from my physical location, I can swipe left or right if I find them to be attractive or not. And if they find me to be attractive, it pops up a window and I can now have communication with them. I said, well, I, I guess that makes sense. I said, what's the desired outcome? He goes, man, really, if I come into town and I'm bored or lonely, I know I can hook up with a chick just by driving through a town. I'm like, man, that is wild. Like, I think about the trouble I would have been in had that existed when I was being a complete piece of shit. It would have been all downhill for me. I mean, it would have been bad. Not because I was a womanizer, but because I enjoyed the chase, which I guess in my own capacity makes me a womanizer. But I was never one of those people that was going out just to hook up with people randomly. I was always looking for the fulfillment of a relationship, but also looking for the adulation of knowing that I could have one. Again, all stemmed off some sort of deep-rooted insecurity that I eventually had to get over. But in that, like, I'm seeing what Tinder is, and I'm seeing how I was interacting on social media prior to, to Lindsay, and really even when I first started dating Lindsay. And these are things that her and I have covered in depth on our own podcast and in our own relationship. But it's really crazy. Like, one of the stories I remember that I don't know that I've shared before, which is super crazy. So I'm in New York City, and I'm selling clothing. You know, still I'm selling suits. So I think Lindsay and I at this point have been together a year and two or three months, maybe a little bit longer. I'm in New York City, and Lindsay has flown into Washington, D.C., where her brother lives because everybody's having Thanksgiving in Washington, D.C. So I'm going to drive. I drove from Columbus to New York to meet with clients and then went from New York down to D.C. And as I'm in New York, I'm messaging back and forth with this woman. And the woman's from Dublin, Ohio. And I see her photo, and it, it pops up, and we're friends on social media, we're friends on Facebook, and I see a lot of our mutual friends commenting on some of her photos. And like I'm, I end up messaging her or commenting on her photo like, you, know, you look super familiar. Where do I know you from? Okay, well, I certainly didn't need to do that. Like I'm in a committed relationship. I'm happy. And sure, there's a part of me that was generally curious, like, where have I met this woman at? Where have I seen her at? But there was no benefit to me doing this. Like, zero. None. Like, less than none. And so she eventually direct messages me, or vice versa. I don't remember how it happened, so I'll take ownership. I'll say I direct message her. Might as well just put it out there. 
Minutes in this direct messaging, she goes back and forth and says, well, you know, do you watch adult films? I'm like, man, is she flirting with me right now? Like, what is this? I'm like, well, you know, I have or I do. Probably back then it was somewhere in between. It definitely wasn't something I was watching on a consistent basis, but it wasn't something I was going to shy away from that I'd ever watched before. And she ends up saying that she is an adult film star. She's a porn star. I'm like, get out of here. Like, here's a girl that, a woman, not a girl, I mean, she's a grown woman, that's from Dublin, Ohio, that just says, like, I'm in porn. And now my, like, my curiosity is spiked. Not because I want to sleep with her or hook up with her or do anything inappropriate with her, which I know is going to sound foreign. Like, how could that be possible? Well, for me, like, I have this incredible sense of curiosity for why people do what they do. And so I'm messaging with her, like, what, what do you mean you're in porn? Like, your name, like, I don't know your name. And so she shares with me her name, and I don't remember what it is, like her quote-unquote stage name or her performance name or whatever the right terminology is. She shares with me, and she's going back and forth. Like, she sends me a picture of one of her DVD covers or box covers or something. I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, she's into some pretty extreme stuff, and she wouldn't be somebody I would have typically found to be attractive. Not my style in the adult industry or in real life. But here we are, and, and Lindsay... I believe we've shared before, but if we haven't, Lindsay has this unique ability to always know what I'm doing, whether I'm actually sharing it with her or not. So called a sixth sense, called intuition, you know, I think she's a little clairvoyant, but she's able to know when I'm doing something bad or good. Makes it super fun trying to get away with dumb stuff which I haven't done for a long time. This is really the last time I ever remember doing something that I would be not all that proud of. And so it happens to be that I'm picking up this friend because he's going to drive down to, I have to drop him off in Philadelphia before I make it down to D.C. And I'm picking up, and I'm picking him up at Grand Central Station. And so I'm down below, like in Grand Central Station, and I don't have cell phone reception there. Well, no sooner do I get upstairs, do I get to, you know, top level or main level or whatever you want to call it, ground level, and I get these... Endless messages from Lindsay. She's like, what are you doing? I know you're up to something. Tell me what you're up to. Well, she knew I was talking to somebody I shouldn't be talking to. And I've shared with her all my passwords. So she ends up looking and she sees that I've had this conversation with this, this woman. Now, the conversation's not off kilter. Like, I certainly don't say anything that is, you know, sexual in nature. I'm not looking to pick this woman up. I'm generally curious. And Lindsay knows at some base level back then. Again, we're talking three plus years removed now, maybe even four. She knows that I'm curious. Like, we've had these conversations. Like, I want to know what makes somebody tick that jumps into that. Again, it all goes back to the thing that I've shared with, with you. I believe that between 4 and 14, 4 and 12, somewhere in those developmental ages, there's some sort of catastrophic event, whatever we feel to be catastrophic, that forms the way that we live as an adult. So I want to know, like, what happened? Well, this woman and I, again, I don't even remember her name. We never get there. Like, Lindsay... Super unhappy, rightfully so, especially with my track record. And so she's on speakerphone as my buddy and I are driving down through New York into Philadelphia. And then from Philadelphia to D.C., like, she's super distraught. And again, I don't blame her. Like, look at my track record. Just not a good person. Or at least my actions weren't good. And so what happens is it reinstills this fact that, like, social media is just so ridiculously easy to flirt with somebody. Like, I had friends that had mapped out the exact methodology to open up a conversation with a woman using Instagram. And so, I'd have these friends that would watch somebody, you know, in their hometown, become friends with them. And when I say watch, not like the creepy stalker way, but like, look at their profile and see, okay, is there a picture of a guy on there? No. Okay. Is there something in the profile that says she's taken? Nope. All right, there's two positive checks. Now, what I can do is wait for her to post some stuff, like something here and there. Give it a couple weeks, not like every photo, but like most of the photos, and then go back to the original time that her and I became friends and like three or four photos in a row. Like creep, like go backwards. Then from there, she's going to see that I'm not paying attention to her profile, and I can direct messenger like, hey, let's do X, Y, and Z. And this was a proven methodology. This individual that I'm referring to, who I will remain nameless for his own sanity, this is a guy that was going and hooking up with more women on a weekly basis than I had in my entire life. Like, 
ridiculous amount of fornication that is, I'm surprised that he doesn't have to have a lifetime supply of some sort of antibiotics with the way that he was living. Like really, really crazy stuff. But in these crazy stories, I'm realizing just how easy it is to be that loose with your morals. And again, I'm not judging if that's right from wrong. It doesn't fit my life and it might not fit yours, but it fit his at the time. But as a man in today's society, it becomes so easy to step out. Like we've been preconditioned to not want to have tough conversations. You look at when we go all the way back to our elementary school days, you're taught to what, sit down in class, raise your hand when you have a question, don't speak out of turn, don't fight over things, share. Like you start to become watered down in your mindset. You're no longer thought, you're not, no, no longer really taught critical thinking. Sure, in the, in the school capacity, but not in the life capacity. So that progresses into, you know, your adult years. It goes all the way through every bit of the education system. And so you get to the point of, you know, needing to have some really tough conversations, say, I need X, Y, and Z out of the relationship, or I'll go find it somewhere else. It becomes easier today just to go find the something else, just to step out. And that was my entire 20s. It was easier for me to flirt with another woman pick her up, start talking to her, take her out on a date or two before I even had to decide if there was something I wanted to do there. It was so easy. And not because I'm Casanova, not because I'm, you know, silver tongued, not because I'm all that attractive or good looking. Just that's the world we live in. Like, I don't want to downplay my skill set. I was in sales and still I believe we're all in sales and marketing our own capacity. You listen to this podcast because of some sort of marketing or sales methodology that has got you to this point. Nonetheless, that ends up applying to the rest of life. So now as a man in today's society, when I'm looking through social media, I systematically eliminate what I'll call triggers. And not triggers in the fact of, like, I'm going to step out on Lindsay. But there was a time period in life that I've shared where I followed anybody and everybody with a, with a healthy bus line. I'm not going to run from it. I like a busty woman. Always have. I'm sure it goes back to some deep-rooted like psychological event where my mom stopped breastfeeding me too early. Like I'm sure if I dug deep enough, there's going to be some parallels there. Cause again, I think everything goes back to that adolescent time where you're forming your decisions. But here I am like following all these people, not because I even want to correspond with them. Like I truly don't care, but it's just external nonsense. It's external noise. When I use social media to, you know, get my message out and to share with the world what I believe in, and I know that engagement and interaction is part of this game. So I'll literally sit there for some time to just like every photo in my feed. Sometimes I'm paying attention, sometimes I'm not. Now I have stopped doing this since this time period, but we'll just imagine it's still going on right now. So here I am liking all these women's photos. They don't know what my intentions are. I don't know if they have big followings or small followings. I don't even know why I'm following them. What I do know is they become a distraction. They become something that takes my eye off the ball. The ball being having a committed relationship with my wife or back then my fiance or girlfriend, all being Lindsay. Well, this is easy to do. So what I've done since then is systematically when something pops up in my social media feed and it's someone that has their shirt down a little too low or is posting a provocative picture, I do the best I can to start eliminating them, just unfriend them. Not because I'm so weak that I can't handle it, but because I don't need to be exposed to it. Like, I'm in a happy, healthy, committed relationship. I mean, shit, I'm married. I'm never going to talk to the busty woman. I don't even care to. But there are these stories that I used to tell myself, even back when Lindsay and I first got together, that there was no harm in doing that. That what's it matter? It's just somebody on social media. I'm never going to talk to them. I'm just liking their photo. What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is it's eroding this, you know, the solid nature of the relationship I have with my wife or my girlfriend. All over something that's very pointless. Like, who cares? If, if I'm using it as a backup plan, like I need to keep these women just at least as social media friends. So if something happens and my relationship implodes, then I'd have a fallback plan that I'm essentially just assuming the fact my relationship's going to fail. 
Like if my relationship fails and I, if I eliminate all these triggers and I'm, I'm left with just a hundred guy friends on Instagram, I will guarantee you within a day I can add back in new women. Like all I have to do is go to the explore page on Instagram or the people you may know on Facebook and you can add women left and right. What I encourage you to do as a man in today's society is eliminate the people that you don't actually know that are women. Like what does it matter? And sure, I've also shared that in the past six months, I use or am part of or have developed software or in the process of that helps me grow my social media following. Well, I've tried to calibrate that in that I'm not even following women. It's not perfect. Like I certainly, I was scrolling through Instagram today and all of a sudden I see a bunch of half naked women. I click on the profile and I realize I'm friends with photographers that photograph women in a provocative way. And I'm like, shit, like why? Like when did, when did I follow these people? Did I follow them? Do I need to still follow them? Are they adding value to my life? Is there something I need to be connected with them to? The answer for me is no. Again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them or their profession or what they're doing or what they're sharing. It just doesn't add value to my life. And what I found is if things don't add value to my life, especially on social media, it's easier just to eliminate them than to justify why they're staying around. Because as a man, it is much harder to stay in a committed relationship than it is to flirt and find somebody new. And I'm not saying it's not the same for a woman. Lord knows women, we're a bunch of horny guys walking around that we have one or two things in our mind. One of them includes eating and one of them includes sex. Like That's kind of it. That's really what motivates us. Maybe making money. So we can say three. It's just as easy for you to put out some provocative content or to strike up a conversation or like a guy's photo that you find to be attractive to start eroding the quality and content of your relationship. It's crazy. And I'm not saying social media is bad because to me it's not. It's how you grow businesses. It's how you network. It's the world we live in and it's never going to go away. What becomes bad is when you don't realize the fact that it is systematically able to completely destroy what you've built. There was a time period in my life with Lindsay, especially when I first got with her, that it was easy for her to go back, and I didn't even know you could do this, but you could see the photos that I'd liked. Like it popped up on the Explore page or something for, I don't even know how it works. I've never done it before, but I've known plenty of people that have. And in that, you see like, man, you're liking all these chicks pictures. What's going on with you? So now there's that shadow of doubt that creeps in her mind. Even if she trusts me, even if I'd never been a dirtball. Does that shadow of a doubt even need to exist? Like, what is the reason why I'm actually liking these photos? It's stupid. Like, it's really foolish. But yet it's so easy, and to me it felt so harmless, and still in some capacity feels so harmless, that it didn't matter. But it mattered to my partner. And so it mattered enough to her that it mattered to me. And so I've just eliminated them. And it's not perfect. Again, I don't know how many followers I have, but if you've... Go through the people that I'm following. I'm sure you're going to find that I follow women. It's not a perfect equation. But every day that I scroll through my feed, I get rid of people that I don't know. I'm sharing all this because I've been asked a multitude of times, like, how do you stop the cheating? How do you stop the lying? How do you stop the manipulating? How do you build more of a solid relationship when there's been lack of trust? Well, first, you have to accept the fact of what's really went on. You have to accept the fact that you've broken the covenant of trust that's existed, whether you've actually stepped out or whether you've just mentally stepped out by interacting with other women. Once you understand that something exists, you can decide how you want to handle it. So for me as a man, I stepped out and I realized the fact that I'd stepped out and I realized that I didn't want to continue down that path. So now that I realize that there's a better possibility in life, I'm given the opportunity to take action on that better possibility. And the first step of action for me is eliminating triggers. So that's going through my phone, eliminating girls' numbers. Like, why do I need a girl's number? Again, I've shared this in other episodes. I don't believe that men and women can be plutonic friends. Sure, in a business environment, absolutely. But if you just have random women's names in your phone, there's no good reason for them. Same thing on social media. Why are you following people that you're never going to interact with? It's pretty fucking pointless. But we all do it. And so you start eliminating these triggers, then you can pour back into your relationship knowing that there's a solid stance to build from. You build a foundation that matters. I'm not saying you're going to save the relationship. I'm not saying you're going to repair what it was. But you're creating a new operating system that will allow you in your next relationship, if this one doesn't work, 
to build from an area of trust, to build from an area of authenticity, to build from a stance that you know what you stand for. Again, I grew up in the in the time in life where you had Pamela Anderson and Jenny McCarthy that had just come out in Playboy, and like that was it to me. Like that is that was incredible. But I was also like ten. At some point, as men, we have to grow up and do something better than we started our lives with. This oversexualization that exists, this watering down of society, based off the fact that, you know, I grew up watching porn. Again, I've shared all this before. But that's not the real world. Like Playboy was not the real world. Instagram with these women with their, you know, their chests out and their rear ends out. It's not the real world. Men photoshopping their abs is not the real world. Like eliminate these triggers and see how much better life gets once you recalibrate and realize you don't need any of that anyways. So where in your life today are you stuck in the fact that it's actually harder to stay than it is to go? Maybe it's your job where you, you're that person that has systematically jumped from job to job to job, always looking for the next best opportunity. Instead of just doubling down and trying to climb up some of the corporate ladder in the company that you're in, instead of taking these horizontal moves, you start taking vertical moves when you leave a company. Maybe it's in the gym environment where you think that training a certain way that you have to do something different consistently where you never put in the time and energy in your diet or your exercise routine to truly make an impact on your body. So you're always looking for the quick fix like I did. Steroids, the next supplement. Where it's harder just to put in the work than it is to go try to find something new. Or the easiest one for me is in the relationship category. Like maybe you're the type of person that I was, where you're looking for the external validation, where you always think there's gonna be that next rung on the ladder to achieve. You always think there's gonna be the next hottest man or woman to go date. So you're always, you know, your, eye, your head's always on a swivel. Instead of realizing that if you invested in what's in front of you, that that could end up being the best thing you've ever had before. So what I've found in my life time and time again is when I invest the time to stay and focus on what's in front of me and double down on my results versus jump up and leave, I'm able to consistently get shit done.